All right, let's go over a Neopets plot from 2006. So I don't know much about this. We know the Flash died, but Neo Jelly saved the comics. There's three prologues and 15 chapters. So I thought we'd dabble and go down this together. I haven't read it. I haven't seen it. I hope you haven't either. Be kind of fun. So in case you wanted to see how to get there, there's the Wanderer Camp here in the Haunted Woods. And if you click here to go on the path, you will see a screen you've maybe never seen before because I hadn't. I'd always wonder where certain games or shops were in the game. And here you go. This is Neovia. This is where Grave Danger is and Apple Bobbing and a different plot. So it says here that it came up with a TCG. But basically, we're going to follow a story about Gilly, who is a humanoid useful. So here we go. All right, prologue part one. Thank you, Jessica. On one of the many shadowy nights that shroud the haunted woods, a lost traveler named Gilly wandered in the darkness. It's nightfall already, and I still have no idea where I am. Why does this always happen to me? Just as she began to think that she would never find shelter, she spotted a speck of firelight flickering warmly in the distance. Quickly, she hurried towards the fragment of hope. Okay, we got two people there. All right. Why? Come here, child. You're shivering. Take a seat by the fire. All right, they're dancing by a fire. An elephant. Thank you so much, sir. I swear I was on the correct path, but I must have taken a wrong turn. I love the art. It's dangerous to get lost in these woods. Trees and creatures roam the night, and they can swallow the unwary. It's no accident that so many legends and myths surround this place. In fact, I was reading about it just now. Would you like to hear about it? Oh, yes, please. I love these stories. <laughs> All right, looks like, looks like we got a skeeth and Asia and two galert, so... It began with an ordinary family in an ordinary town. Neovia was a quaint little place tucked away in the corner of the haunted woods. Here in the relative peace and quiet lived Edmund, Alice, and their three children. Like every family, they had their problems. Their eldest son, Bruno, a painfully shy young alert who only had eyes for one neopet in town. Hi, Lily. Hey, what do you think you're doing? Oscar, please leave him alone. No, this little twerp needs to learn not to mess with my girl. <laughs> Crack. Ooh, your boy got messed up. <laughs> Oscar, no. Good left hand. That should teach him. Unfortunately, he had neither the charm nor the strength to win her affections. Bruno had always felt awkward and lonely, and it seemed to him that he would always remain this way. Disheartened and miserable, Bruno had resigned himself to his fate, when that same fate took a sudden turn for him. You look troubled. Perhaps I can be of assistance. Uh, it's a crock. I... I have here an elixir proven to chase away all the sorrows and fulfill all desires. Whatever you want in life, it will grant. I only ask for a handful of neopoints in re oh, recompense. <laughs> recompense. It's late. It's five o'clock. A stranger approached Bruno and offered to make all of his wishes come true. The young alert was hesitant and wary. After all, strangers rarely entered their quiet town, but he could not resist the enticing bargain and took the potion home. That night, desperate to see his troubles gone, Bruno drank every last drop of the elixir. The next morning, he awoke to discover that the potion had indeed done all that was promised of it. 
He was now a handsome, strong, confident, alert, everything he'd wished to be, and the change did not go unnoticed. You're looking unusually well today, son. <laughs> he looks dapper. This candle here is kind of sus. Bruno told his father everything about the potion and the wishes it had granted, but the practical Edmund could not accept such good fortune so easily. Problems cannot be solved overnight with magic potions. Success is only achieved through hard work. Unfortunately, he had bigger things to worry about than his son's suddenly improved physique. For years, the family business had been failing, and the struggling finances had been a constant worry to him. Despite his desire to keep supporting his family, business only seemed to get worse. Left-handed again, eh? All right. Consumed with worry, Edmund was hard at work around the town when he heard a voice. You look preoccupied, dear sir. Perhaps I can be of assistance. This, this elixir will chase away all sorrows and fulfill all desires. Whatever you want in life, it will grant. Edmund immediately realized that this potion was the one his son had taken, but, but despite his previous misgivings, he could not restrain a rush of hope and longing. Weighed down with desperate anxiety, he decided that he had nothing to lose and took the bottle home. Over the next few days, Edmund was delighted to discover that his son had spoken the truth. With just a sip of the potion, all of his financial worries vanished into the mist. He found himself in a prospering business again, cutting good deals at every turn and freed of the debt that had plagued him for years. Word soon spread about the wonders of the potion had done for the family. Edmund and Bruno were its principal advocates, eager to tell their story to anyone who asked. Even Reginald, who had taken it to achieve knowledge, did not hesitate to back up his father and brother. Hmm. Soon the entire town was clamoring for these magical elixirs. Every father, mother, son, and daughter lined the streets, for there are few who do not long more for more in this world. Mm. Got a cow here, that's kinda cool. Only the innocent only the innocent, those with not a care in the world did not wish to drink, and there were a precious few of them. Reginald, come and play with me. I'll be there in a moment, sister. Just let me finish this book. The rest of the townsfolk townspeople drank the elixirs in earnest, greedily believing that all their wishes would be fulfilled overnight. I mean, they look pretty raggedy. And at first, it seemed like those dreams had all come true. So they were like old and destitute, and now the slick back hair looks pretty cool in the Asia. Part two. This is going to be a lot of comic, eh? As the days passed, however, the potion began to reveal the darker side of their ambitions. Edmund grew miserly with his newfound fortune and became suspicious of everyone around him. Bruno's strength continued to grow until he was no longer a handsome galert, but a revolting muscular creature of grotesque shape and form. Reginald soon found that he had acquired such a vast intellect that no Niebeck could follow his conversation anymore, leaving him to take lonely refuge among his books. Their fellow townspeople were undergoing a similar change. They found their greed and ambition taking on horribly twisted forms, turning them into something far worse than they had ever dreamed. The ecstatic delight that had settled over Neovia soon vanished as quickly as it had come. A skinny elephant. At first they clamored for the stranger's head, intending to demand to know what his potions had done to them, but he'd vanished as if he had never existed. 
Desperate to find someone to blame, they turned to Ed they turned on Edmund and his family, claiming they were at fault for first advertising the elixir. The family found themselves subjected to scorn and hatred. Even those who had formerly called friends were now their attackers. Stricken with the grief of betrayal, they retreated into their home to escape the crowd's wrath. Seeing that their little sister seemed to be the only one unaffected by the madness gripping the town, Bruno asked Reginald to take her and flee into the haunted woods where she could hide somewhere safe until the danger had passed. As Bruno tried to create, to create a distraction, they managed to escape the angry mob's notice as they slipped into the darkness of the haunted woods. Over here. The two young Neopets wandered into the maze-like woods, hostile even to longtime residents. At every turn, tree branches seemed to reach out for them and bewilder their senses, trapping them in a labyrinth of twists and turns. Then help came upon them from a very unexpected direction. That's got wings on it. The mysterious earth fairy, Alary, a figure from ghost stories told by children of the woods to frighten each other appear before them. Yet, like many legends, she was not quite the terrifying phantom the children had imagined when they whispered tales of her in hushed voices at night. There is no other refuge for her. It's all right, brother. I feel safe with her. <laughs> A cute little Ixie. Though unwilling to let his sister leave his care, Reginald relented, for he believed there was no other way. He watched unhappily as she left with the fairy before turning his steps back towards Neovia to help the rest of his family. She looked back. That's cute. Meanwhile, back in Neovia, the townspeople's anger had reached a fever pitch. In their fury, they attempted to get past Bruno and break into the house, but he barely stood his ground. He's got a light post. <laughs> Pushed to the brink, the mob turned its wrath upon Bruno as Edmund and Alice cowered in their house, terrified they could only listen as their eldest son was attacked and driven from the place where he had grown up. This is all his fault. Get him! Reginald returned to Neovia just in time to see his brother chased out by the town folk, but all he could do was watch helplessly as they disappeared into the dark forest. He waited until the townspeople had all gone and then made his way back into the house. This is quite a dark story. Quickly he found his parents and urged them to find safety. Reginald hurried his parents to an old abandoned mansion across town. As a child, he had played hide-and-seek there and knew it contained many secret rooms and passages. After losing Bruno in the maze of the woods, the townspeople returned to Neovia to search for the rest of the family. Dang, they really want a piece of that ass. <laughs> I like that over here. Unable to discover the whereabouts of Edmund and his family, the Neovians turn against one another. Hey, a Shoiru. There's some great art here. Stop! The chaos escalated until the townsfolk began to fight with one another. The situation might have disintegrated into rioting at that point, but at the last moment... As the town teetered on the brink of insanity, the mayor of Neovia stepped in and took control. It's a Bruce. Look at the swole. <laughs> oh, what is that? Citizens of Neovia, we must remain calm. The time for blame has passed. There will be an opportunity for retribution later. For now, we must work together if we are to solve this. That's a kachik. That's what that is. We have been cursed by magic, so we must be cured by magic. I propose that we summon the spirit of slumber 
He haunts these very woods and he may be able to help us. Desperate for guidance, the town folks gather together and summon the spirit. Yeah, a little sus. The spirit of slumber appeared and instantly realized a dire situation. He told them that he could end their suffering, but the price would be terrible. Nevertheless, the mayor agreed to the terms and the curse was lifted. But it did indeed come with a terrible price. That's a fascinating story, as are most legends. Now off to bed with you, child. It's getting late. The next morning, when the first rays of sunlight had struggled through the thick overhang of tree branches, Gilly thanked the wanderer for his hospitality and set off once more into the woods. Talk about stranger danger. All right, on to the main storyline. I wonder what lies that way. Ooh. All right, we fight in branches. Comes across a town. Looks eerie. So this must be Neovia. Okay, she just heard a story. She now sees a rebel or ruined town with rubble. What's this? It's a little locket. Excuse me, I was wondering if you could tell me anything about this locket. Well, certainly, little miss. Well, that's a pretty little trinket this is. I haven't seen one like it in years. I realize this is unlikely, but do you perhaps know anything about its owner? I couldn't say. They used to make a lot of these lockets like that, but these days... Well, it's clear no one around here is going to help me. I wonder if there might be someone deeper in the woods who could identify this locket. Hello, is anyone home? Um, hello. I, I'm Gilly. I was, was wondering if I could ask you some quick, quick questions. I hear there's a town with a curse. I thought you might know something about it. There are a lot of crazy myths about the woods, kid. But I've seen proof. Neopets used to live there and now there's no one in it. Is it true there was a potion? Was there really a... Alright kid, that's enough. Get lost. I wonder what species are witches. Oh boy. I have a locket here that I found. I think it may be a clue. Where did you get that? In the town. There's something mysterious about that place. Look, little girl, I should have turned you into a stink beetle the moment you interrupted me, but I was too nice. If you're not out of here in three seconds, I'll be sure to fix that. Wait, please. Three, two. <laughs> Slam. And it's starting to rain. I have to find shelter before the storm gets worse. Oh, we're in a dark cave at night with a little lantern. Yep. <clears throat> Part two. Ah, look at that shadow. Who's it going to be? A steak, half-eaten apple, <laughs> and are you so pale? <laughs> it's rotten steak. Ew. Munch, munch, munch. Looks like someone we know. Gasp. Ah, oof. He's going to trip. Clunk, splash. Ugh. I can't leave him all alone after I've caused him so much pain, even if he did attack me first. 
Did she trip him? Not that I saw. Okay. Roar. I love seeing the useful tail from like a different angle. Let me in, please let me in. She's back at the witch. I thought I told you never to come back. Yeah, oh shit. <laughs> the person who drew these art, I love like. <laughs> Trouble in paradise. Brother, you're alive. Some sister, yo. Sophie, brother, how did you, what happened to you that night? I like how in like five minutes she fell in the cave and they found each other, but plot. I tried to calm the townspeople while you and Reginald escaped, but they turned on me and chased me out of Neovia. I made a headlong dash into the woods, blindly crashing through, through the leaves and branches, hotly pursued by the Neopets who had once been my friends and neighbors. I managed to lose them under the cover of night and slipped into the darker recesses of the woods as they continued to search for me. Sneaky. Eventually, I found shelter in an empty cave, and I remained there until the townspeople gave up. I didn't dare return to town, however, because I was afraid that I would merely provoke them again. I stayed in that cave and made it my home. I haven't seen my family since. What about you, Sophie? Where did you go? We ran into the Earth Fairy, Larry, who took me into this dingy old shack. Inside, she handed me a magical chest that she said could, that would contain everything I needed to survive, and then she vanished. Some protector. <laughs> like, uh, what a kid she looks like. I've returned to Neovia a few days later to see if I could find you and the rest of our family, but the whole place was deserted. I came back several more times over the following weeks, but it was the same thing every time. Everyone had just gone up and gone. To where I had no idea. On Halloween night, I decided to return one last time. You can imagine my surprise when I saw the town bustling with Neopets once more. There was something weird about them though. They went about their daily errands but with none of their usual bickering and chattering. Their faces were entirely blank and their bodies looked like they were only going through the motions. When I accidentally touched one of them, I realized that these weren't even real physical bodies. I stayed awake that entire night, poring over books and mixing potions in any attempt to find a cure. But when I revisited the town the next morning, it was once again empty. Since then, I spent all my time unsuccessfully working on a cure. I go back every Halloween, which is when the townspeople reappear, but it always fails. Had I known you'd escape, Bruno, I would have looked for you as well. That must be the spirit of. Sl that must be what the spirit of slumber did. The spirit of slumber. <laughs> You cast a spell on the town. There must be a way to reverse it. Yo, this useful is coming in clutch. I think it's Sophie. I've been working on this for 10 years, kid. There's not much I haven't tried. Well, there is a Larry. She might know more about this guy. But you don't know about the spirit of slumber? I think we can still figure this out and save the town and your family, Sophie. It can't hurt to look for the Earth Fairy. With any luck, we'll find her in the forest near her. Hey, wait up. I want to help. No way, brat. You're not coming with us. <laughs> the young lady isn't so bad. Let her go. Fine. 
but she'd better not get in the way. Got it. Okay, they're going to walk in the forest. He's taking, you know, her side. We're climbing. Little backpack useful. This is a uh, clearly a reference to uh, <laughs> the minds of Moria. Speak, friend, and enter. Hello, Sophie. Aliri. We need your help. Neovia is under some sort of spell. Every year in Halloween, ghostly versions of the townspeople appear, but they're gone the next morning and don't show up for another year. We think. It's the work of this guy. Call the Spirit of Slumber. He was summoned by the mayor and the townspeople at the height of Neovia's need. This was his solution for the havoc the potion had wreaked. We want to find him so he can reverse the spell. The Spirit of Slumber. You're mad. None of you have any idea what you're dealing with. Power like his is not to be trifled with. Go home before you get hurt. I've heard enough. Well, looks like Larry's got hands, so get zapped. Please turn into something ugly. No, oh, she just... Roar. Stop. Yo... My, my Earth Fairy just got wamboed. What do you think you're doing, Bruno? This Earth Fairy is powerful. I can feel it. And yet she does nothing. She lit. She left you to fend for yourself all those years and never lifted a finger to aid Neovia. And now she won't even give us a single helping word. Yo, my guy's right. You are not as weak as I thought. If you don't tell us about the spirit of slumber, I'll show you just how talking about biting the hand that fed you. Damn. <clears throat> Very well. Oh, she's got toes. There you go. He used to be a neopet in life, but he became a powerful spirit of the woods when he died. I have never seen him myself. They say he appears and vanishes as mysteriously as the morning mist. There are many denizens in the woods that have lived here longer than I. However, they might be more well versed in the ancient lore of the forest. Sophie. For your own hope, for your own sake, I hope you fail. How is this very, like, weak? Still no real help from the Earth Fairy. Where do we go now? Well, Aliri told us to look for denizens of the forest who have lived here longer than she has. Maybe we could try talking to the burr. No. But the brain tree has lived here for so long, he might know the name of the Spirit of Slumber. I have a bad exp I had a bad experience with the brain tree. What happened? I had a bad experience. The, he can't even move. Come on, it won't be that bad. I'm sure we'll just pop over and ask. <laughs> She's such main character syndrome. I love it. I said no. Once again, this art is so colorful and expressive. I love it. Sophie, what do you think you're doing? I don't know what happened between you and the brain tree, but you know he probably has information that is vital to us. Surely you could overcome your grudge long enough to realize that Gilly was only trying to help us and she's just a little girl. Blasting her was uncalled for. Oh, she got messed up. Annoyed little twerp, I auto. I'm sorry. Ooh, excuse us, Mr. Braintree, but can you tell us 
who the spirit of slumber is. The spirit of slumber, tell me when he died. I'll tell you his real name. <laughs> this is awesome. This is wonderful art of the brain tree. Well, off the software we go. Well, that's easy. We'll just ask the esophager. What? No, I had a bad... Yeah, we know. <laughs> Never mind. Fine, let's go. It can only tell you when someone died. If they actually died. The spirit of slumber never died. Tell me his real name and it'll tell you when he died. That's hardly fair. We need to know the name to know when he died, but we need to find out when he died to know the name. <laughs> That's some bullshit. <laughs> There is a possibility if we can find his bones, I know a potion that can ID him from the remains. Yo, dark magic? But how do we find his bones if we don't know where his body is buried? Well, that's easy. We'll just dig up every single grape in the haunted woods until we find him. Yeah, gulp indeed. Hmm. An actual yearbull? Huh. So we're in a maze with books. Mind if we borrow these. Did I skip something? Nope. Oh, so they found some books and some shovels. Yo! This is kind of sus. She's brewing. He's digging. We're not very impressed. I agree. This has been a great story, by the way, with wonderful art. If this was like made a movie in like 2006, like I might have been, I might have gotten to watch it if I was that, you know, if I'd seen it. Elixir on the bone. That's it this panel's not that good <laughs> which grade did that bone come from arg oh the tombstone's worn down he has an idea then he doesn't someone's got to say it there's no other way we're going to have to go through the caretaker's registries and cross off every legible name that's on a headstone. Whatever's left has to be the spirit of slumber's name. She's kind of smart again. That's it. We found the right bone thanks to your great potion work, Sophie. And now we have his true name. So how do we summon him? I know a spell that should help. <laughs> I love this art. Wap. What is it? What's wrong? Won't work. Why not? The potion only works if someone drinks it and allows the spirit of slumber to inhabit their body. We can't. I'll do it. It's too dangerous. I won't let you do it. What if some what if something goes wrong it could kill you? There's n there's no one else Gilly isn't nearly big enough or strong enough to house the spirit and we need you to work the magic. I can't risk it. I can't lose you again. It's the only way to bring back Neovia, to bring back our family. Look at her like all sad. Trust me. Famous last words. Glug, 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 glug. <laughs> I love how, like, they have to have the ear holes for these, like, all these strange pets. 
Okay, there's something going on with the potion. He's transforming. Oh, shit. The spirit of slumber. I am. Why have you summoned me in this way? I want you to reverse the spell you cast on Neovia. So be it. <laughs> I hope we don't run into any werewolves. You mean were loops? <laughs> don't worry. It's a common misconception that were loops roam this area. They're actually quite rare, quite rare in the woods around Neovia. The locket, exactly. What's that about? The little prying eye. Like, this artist nailed these panels. It's really pretty. My mother gave it to me when I was little. You'll have to introduce me to her when we cure the town. I don't know. This might not work. What if we don't succeed? I'm sure we will. She's like Frodo. By Frodo, I meant Samwise. <laughs> like, just give it 110 to the mission. We have arrived. So what's going to go wrong? Okay, there's still ghosts. We're looking around. Let the spell be undone. What's going to happen? What's your guess? I like his little, like, overcast body here. So they're turning back to real life. Okay. That's mom and dad. Mom, dad, Reggie. Look at the excitement. Bruno. Did, did it work? Yes, we did it. And our family is here. A little cautious. We know what's up. Uh, Sophie. What? Oh, shit. <laughs> Look at the mutant kajik. The spirit of slumber only undid a spell, not the potion. We got the Hulk right there. Yo. Arg. Oh no. Rawr. Ah! Sophie, wait. I would buy this as a poster. This is this is like bring back this artist. Look what they have wrought upon us. Destroy them. And there's the croc in the back again. He recognized them. Let's go. Is that him? Yes. He's getting away. I'll hold them back. Go. Rawr. Hey, you. <laughs> What a badass. Oh, chasing into the cemetery. Growl, rumble. Uh-oh. Crack. Smash. Okay. <laughs> Stop. Look at that text bubble, too. He's trying to get away. He does magic. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I guess about to see a live tree. Oh, yeah. They're tree ants. More fantastic art. Drat. <laughs> she messed them up. Hey, stop. Into a castle. Looks familiar. Ooh. You. You 
You're the one who sold the potions, aren't you? Who are you? W me? Why, Crockley's the name. You don't need me, though. What you seek lies inside. You're lying. Are you denying? Don't you think I led you here for a reason? Ooh. Brains. Brains. They get eaten, that is. You had the best makeup. Your mind soon, my girl, for the way is fast becoming barred. Okay, go inside or get eaten. Meanwhile, this is all your fault. You ruined everything. Look at yourselves and see what he's done to you. You were happily once, were you not, Neovians? Long have we suffered under the taint he brought to our town. But no more shall we suffer quietly. Today we claim vengeance. We got Slenderman over here. Okay, he's fighting him off. Grabbing someone. Smash. Bam. It's a bloomeroo. Got to find somewhere to hide. I wonder where mother and father went. Uh oh. Into a cellar. He sees someone's feet. Where is that monster? How I wish I could help you. Meanwhile, slam. He's getting potions. He's making something. 13. He's mixing. Smelling. Ooh. Got a bunch of cool beakers. I like it. Well, here goes nothing. So she made like a bunch of kind of potions. I feel like something's missing from this potion, but I have no idea what. Guess I'll just have to try it as it is for now. Meanwhile, I hate getting lost. Ooh, there's a... A skeleton with an awesome flower in it. Amazing. It's still fresh. It's like a night lily. Oof. Sophie. Are you alright? I'm fine. Look, I'm sorry about what happened. But you're right. We need to kick this curse once and for. What's that you're holding, kid? Oh, this? Well, I found Crockley in town and followed him to this old abandoned asylum. The inhabitants were um, long gone, but I found this flower still fresh and blooming. Pretty, isn't it? That's it. That's the ingredient I'm missing. Oh, dear. This should work. We just need to pour it into the town's well now. <clears throat> Is that a jub jub with four hands? <laughs> Six? <laughs> Zap. Zet zet. <laughs> Are you sure about this, Sophie? This is your chance. Just go home and forget about all of this. Pretend it never happened. Why invite more heartache? Honestly, could you bear it if it didn't work? I'll take my chances. Zoom. Was that a barrier? Let's go. Crack. Oof. Roar. I should look at this a little bit longer. Are you all alright? The mayor is stronger than he appears. <clears throat> Whose eye is that? The last chapter. Oh, my voice. All right, let's finish strong. Ooh, we transformed. Okay. 
Mayor Thumpert. Smash. Rawr. Grr. He's distracted. Blast him. Zap. He's dizzy. Okay. Kachow. Eep eep. Oh, he's a mosquito thingy. Here, quickly take this. No. I will finish what I started. Give it to the townspeople first. Glug, 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 glug. Let's go. We're not wanted here. At least not now. There's no point in waiting. We'll return tomorrow when they've all had a chance to drink. Slender Man is real. Oh, they're shrinking. Oh, our cute little Kachik. The next day. Welcome back to the Ovia. Not quite the same welcome as before. Sophie. Reggie. Mother. Father. My dear. We're so glad you're all right. Bruno the Curse. You must drink as well. Glug, 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 glug. Kind of sus. Why isn't it working? You must have been under the potion's effect for too long. It's alright, Sophie. I'm used to looking like this anyway. It matters not. You are still our son and always will be. We will have to rebuild, but, think, but the important thing is that we are all together again. About that. I know you're my family and I'm glad to see you all restored, but this town, it's got too many bad memories. I've gotten too used to living alone. Neovi will always be a distant dream for me. But Sophie, I'm sorry Reggie, visit me anytime you like, but this place just isn't home. It's got that PTSD. Goodbye. Here's a little croc. <laughs> Fantastic. And so Sophie left after seeing the townspeople of Neovia saved from its decade-long curse. Now then, it's off to bed with you children. It's best not to wander in the woods after dark after all. Who knows what might swallow the unwary. The end. What a great story. <clears throat> Not too many plot twists, but it was fun. It was wholesome. It was enjoyable. <sighs> Hope you enjoyed that, because I sure did. Wonderful art.